very good morning to all of you the theme is dare to revolutionize having spent more than two decades in teaching consulting and mentoring startups in these two decades i've learned a lot and i thought i can share my learning of how to revolutionize learning and also achieve success the talk is about mantras for learning and success learning has been defined by many stalwarts there are many theories for learning but how does learning happen if you look at learning happen we have the inputs from the scriptures so i am going to touch on scriptures i am also going to touch on modern management concepts which can help students who are actually pursuing their schooling and people who are working to possibly understand and revolutionize learning and success so the theories for learning are many but the scriptures says this acharya padamardatte padam shishya swamedhaya padam sab brahmacharyebhyah padam kala kramena cha it's from the dharma sutras which says how actually learning happens many a time we hear students telling that hey my prof is not good so i am not interested in this because i can't learn well oh i have to depend on some online stuff to learn but the scripture says it's only one fourth that is learned from the teacher one fourth is learned from teacher which is acharya padamardatte padam shishya swamedaya one fourth is through self efforts you have to put a lot of self efforts to learn stuff that is one fourth and one fourth is from the peer learning the student groups the current nep is also focusing on all these aspects and this is one fourth of learning that happens through the peer groups and one fourth can be learned over a period of time that the life will teach you it's a continuous learning process and life will teach you how to keep learning and that's how learning happens if you follow this for sure you can revolutionize learning as you go on because it's one fourth that is continuous process that keeps happening now the most important and effective aspect that has to be remembered while you learn most importantly the high school students and students who are pursuing their graduation post graduation remember this that what will others think of me if i am going to ask some question or doubts the trap of what will others think of me will stop learning happen so if you keep thinking what others think of me then the learning will not be effective the second is what if others laugh at me if i go and tell something or if i am in the process of learning or trying something that also should not be bothered you should not be bothered about these two then you will for sure be having a great learning experience and the most important aspect to remember for effective learning is be bold and have the ability to learn new skills and knowledge right through your life never stop learning and be bold for it and be bold to volunteer if you're going to volunteer learning will happen in a much better fashion because opportunities doesn't strike many a time when it comes in you'll have to go and volunteer and ensure that you take that opportunity learning will happen effectively last be bold to take responsibilities with a lot of responsibilities that you take voluntarily learning will happen in a very very effective fashion next the role of trust in learning is trust needed in learning of course let me again quote something from the rig veda shraddhavan labate gyanam the one with all faith and trust is the one who will gain all wisdom so if you're going to have trust then for sure learning will happen in an effective fashion so if you ask what if i don't have trust well there is something again from the bhagavad gita अज्ञातश्रद्धान्य संशयात्मा विनश्यति नयम लोको नस्ते न परो न सुखम संशयात्मन द पर्सन हू डजन हैव फेथ एंड ट्रस्ट विल नेवर बी हैप्पी एंड इज डूम विल नेवर गो एंड फाइंड हैप्पीनेस दिस पर्टिकुलर लाइफ एंड पॉसिबली एवर एवर अगेन विल नॉट बी एबल टू गो एंड गेट द हैप्पीनेस एंड लर्निंग के नॉट हैपन विदउट ट्रस्ट सो दैट इज वॉट द धर्म सूत्रास एक्चुअली टेल अबाउट लर्निंग लेट मी गो फर्दर द रोल ऑफ ट्रस्ट इन लर्निंग एंड ग्रोथ for students who are actually learning or the high school and the post graduate students keep trust at the center and keep doubts at the periphery many a time we are bombarded with negativity so we try to go and doubt everything keep trust at the center 
you might do hundred of, uh, hundreds of analysis and then join a course or join a school or join a college or take a decision of investing somewhere. That's fine. But after you do that, trust that process. Keep trust at the center, keep doubts at the periphery. If you keep doubting, 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 Shraddhavan Labate Gyanam, remember, if you keep doubting, learning cannot happen. Keep trust at the center, keep doubts at the periphery. And once you join the workforce, keep commitment at the center and keep expectations at the periphery. Unfortunately, many of you today keep expectations at center. What will I get if I do this? When will I get my next increment? How much more profit can I get? How is that my incentives are going to be calculated? It's all about expectations. Keep expectations at the periphery and keep commitment at the center. The moment you keep commitment at the center, for sure learning can happen in a fabulous way and success will definitely reach your doorstep by itself. You need not keep running for it. But if you make it topsy-turvy and keep expectations at the center and commitment at the periphery or doubts at the center and trust at the periphery, things will be very difficult to handle. So remember, trust at the center, doubts at the periphery. Commitment at the center, expectations at the periphery. Learning will be fabulous, learning will be revolutionized and success will always be yours. Let me go further, contemplating and question. If you want to generate knowledge and if you want to go and learn, then for sure you will have to ensure that you question. The more you question, contemplate and question. The moment you are going to contemplate and question, knowledge creation happens. Let me take something from our own scriptures. Parikshit questions Sukharishi. The output? Bhagavatam. Let me go further. Valmiki question Narada Muni. The compilation is Ramayana. Yudhishthir question Bhishma. The compilation is Vishnu Sahasranama. Maitreya question Parasara. And the output is Vishnu Purana. Arjuna question Krishna. All of us know this. The output is Bhagavad Gita. We can see again and again and again it is the questioning after contemplation that helps in knowledge creation. So if you contemplate and question, contemplate and question and keep continuously doing it, for sure knowledge creation can happen. There might be several tools which can help you do this, but you will have to go and contemplate and question. For sure learning can be very effective, knowledge creation can keep happening. Now going to the mantras of success, this is out of my own experience, the triple bottom line. If you want to ensure that you want to keep learning and be successful, the fundamental thing is do a good job. Whatever is given to you, give your entire 200% to it. Assume that that's the last day that's available for you to do it and do it with utmost sincerity. Be it studies, be it the work that you're assigned, be it your KRAs that you have defined, be it your goals. Ensure you give your 200% to it. That is the first line where I say do a good job. It's not enough if you're going to do a good job alone. Tell your boss that you're doing a good job. Most important, the boss could be your teacher if you're in a school, could be a prof if you're in a college, could be your immediate L plus one, the person whom you're reporting to. You must necessarily tell what is the good job that you're doing, keep telling. Some people shy away telling, why should I do this? My boss should know it. No, it doesn't happen that way. You will necessarily have to tell your boss, telling you're doing a good job. Don't stop there, tell the world that you're doing a good job. How? Tweet it, blog it, ensure you post it. Keep telling the world that you're doing a good job. Okay, after that what? Repeat step one, do a good job. If you're going to keep continuing this, excellent learning can happen for sure. Excellent growth is assured for sure. And for sure, learning and success will be for you. But remember the first step, do a good job. If you're not doing it, the step two and step three doesn't make any sense. So do a good job, tell your boss you're doing a good job and tell the world you're doing a good job. For sure, learning keeps happening because you'll have to keep doing a good job and success will be for yours. So that's going to be my last slide, Mantras for Success. I've taken this from the Sumantra Goshal, late London School of uh, Business Prof, who actually found out why are some managers successful. He did a survey, went about around 30, 40,000 managers and started interviewing them to find out why are some managers only successful. Why are others not? And he created this matrix, it's called the energy focus matrix. You got high and low on both sides, high and low on energy, high and low on focus, right? And he found that 40% of managers are distract managers. Distracted managers have very high energy, very low on focus. Very high on energy, 
they want to go and do many things. They want to go and ensure that a lot of activities are done, right? So very, very high on energy. So we find some students who are of this kind as well. They are the ones who want to do everything. In a class, you announce that there is an event. Are there volunteers? Hands go up, telling it's me. If there is a project, any volunteers? Hands go up, telling it's me. But after a week or so when the review is going to happen and the milestone is going to be set, you find them missing. Why? Low on focus. They don't have the focus to carry on what they have to actually plan. Very high on energy, they want to be everywhere, but they don't end up doing anything. Very high on energy, distracted managers. Let me go to the next one, the procrastinators. In his survey, he found 30% of managers to be procrastinators. Low on energy, low on focus. Do not know what they want to do in life. They keep job hopping, possibly 25 jobs in a span of five years. Happens. Okay. You find such managers as well. All they want, they don't know. They keep thinking they're going to chase money and keep going. Low on energy, low on focus. No vision. And you find some students also like this. They don't have a map, a road map and a vision, but just carry on on whatever they are in. Now going with disengaged, you can see 20% of managers are disengaged managers. Many a time in the students, it is much more than the 20% is my experience. Why? Very high on focus, but low on energy. Example, say, I want to reduce 10 kilos year 2024. Fantastic. Focus is clear. Vision is set. And then you go ahead with the process, right? So January 1st, done. Alarm set for 5 o'clock. You got a clear cut plan that is ready. 5 to 5.30 jogging. 5.30 I'll do something. 5, 6 o'clock is something. All the plan is ready. It's kept there. You take a photograph. You post on Instagram, Facebook. Hashtag life is changing. Hashtag I'm going to have a routine soon. All that fine. January 1st, alarm rings, you start. Second, snooze. Third, snooze again. Fourth of Jan, possibly you switch off the alarm and go to sleep. These are the kind of people who have a very high focus and possibly low on energy. Low on energy because they can't take up the plan that they created to a logical conclusion. So as I explain here, you can put yourself in one of these metrics and see where do you belong. And the only one which he found is the purposeful action takers, the 10% of managers who actually go ahead and achieve things. High on energy, high on focus. You would have found such individuals, right? The moment you meet them, you feel energetic. You feel really happy because they are oozing out positive energy. They are oozing out positive stuff. At the same time, they got a vision which is very clearly defined. They got a fantastic focus with them. These are the individuals who ensure that they achieve success. So if you are in one of those quadrants, all you need to do is just push the quadrant to the right and ensure that you are in a high energy, high focus. Not to remember ethics values, that's for given. It should be there for sure, not without it at all, right? So that being the case, you will for sure be there. It's not about just motivation, it is oleation. It should be the fire in the belly. It's you who has set the plan. It's you who has to push yourself, not someone else constantly motivating you. It should be within. When it's going to happen, for sure, success will be yours. Thank you so much for your patient listening. I hope this was something which is revolutionary in learning and success. Thank you.